What is going on guys, Fitcho here and welcome back to the Fitcho Cruise. Episode number 5 is round 3, race 1 and we are in the Principality. We're in Monaco, the toughest track on this GP2 calendar, but definitely my favourite track on this calendar and probably my strongest track as well. This is a great opportunity for us to pick up another race win, probably the best chance of the season for us to pick up another race win and get some important points on that board to go towards that championship. I'm pretty confident going into this weekend. I think I have some very good pace, but I don't know where the field, rest of the field is going to be, so I guess we should find out and jump into one-shot qualifying. Here we go, one-shot qualifying in Monaco for today's feature race. We head up to Sandoval. I was a little bit early on the brakes than what I would have liked as we head through the corner up Beau Rivage, we're actually leading as we head up to Massenet and now the lead has just been taken from Norman Nato as we run it way too deep into with Spahn at Casino. That is a very scrappy start. Also, that's just a scrappy qualifying full stop. We didn't change down enough gears through Massenet and then we just clip the wall and it just spins us around at Casino Square and we are definitely going to be starting this race last as the leader is already going into the tunnels as we tunnels we are only at Mirabeau and that is our qualifying done we're going to be starting this race from the back of the grid in P22 not the qualifying that we wanted for sure so Sergei Sorokin has taken pole here in Monaco Norman Nato will be alongside him on the front row and the second row has been locked out by the Prima guys who set the exact same lap time teammates setting the exact same lap time then in the third row of the grid you got Raffaele Marcello and Louis Delotraz I think this is probably his best qualifying performance of the season I'm not too sure about that though and then if we scroll all the way down, the Tridents are locking out the last row on the grid after I completely stuffed up that qualifying. I'm going to be starting this race from dead last, but at least I'll have my teammate alongside me at the start. So if we have a look at the race strategy for today's feet race, it's going to be a one-stop strategy starting on the super softs, then around lap 23 we'll be swapping onto the ultra softs. Now this is actually a slightly different strategy to what I think most of the AI would I will be doing. The top 10 will definitely be starting on the ultra softs. I reckon a lot of the other cars will also start on the ultra softs and swap to the super softs pretty early on in the race then go to the end. So we're going for the opposite to what most other cars are doing. Hopefully this will help us, but I'm really not too sure. But without further ado, let's jump into the race. Here we go. Engage the clutch. Get the revs up to the optimal range. The lights are coming on. And it's lights out. And away we go. The feature race here in Monaco is underway. And we get a much better start than our teammate. Hopefully we can still pull to the inside as we head up towards Sandoval. We're going to go late under the brakes. Try and make up as many positions as quickly as we can. As we're now going side by side with Artem Markov in his rush. As we head up. Beau Rivage, this never usually ends well as we head into Massenet and we make that move stick. Can we try out the inside of Latifi? You know, that'll be a little bit aggressive. We're already up into 15th place, so we had a pretty good start. I want to go up the inside there. It's so tempting, but it will guarantee cause a crash at the hairpin. It happens every time. I know this game too well. We just literally, I mean, hit up the arse, and now I've been absolutely dive bombed by Mark Love, and this is going to cause a crash. It's going to cause a crash. We've just snuck through. That was so close to carnage there we managed to survive and the safety car is out i'm not too sure why but the safety car has been called here we go safety car is coming in this lap we're right on the back of nicholas latifi up into rich revs getting ready for this restart go slower please latifi far out absolutely parking the bus in front of us and he's actually got a pretty decent safety car restart from that He's right on the back of it to freeze and we're not that close to him. There's yellow flags already out behind us. There seems to be a crash at Raskas. We've got absolutely no one behind us. We head up towards Sandoval. Unfortunately, we are not close enough to attack Nicholas Latifi this time around. Can we try and get a good run up Beau Rivage? Try something to massinate. I don't think it's going to work either. Can we try and get a better exit out of Raskas? Up the inside of Anthony Nodes. And we make the move stick on Nicholas Latifi for P14. That is by no means a normal overtaking opportunity, but you've got to get creative around Monaco. There are no real 
overtaking opportunities at this track as now we've got Nick DeFree in front of us. He is on the super soft tyre, so he's on the same strategy as we are, so we are properly racing him. We are right on the back of Nick DeFree. We haven't got DRS this lap. We're not going to be able to make that move stick up the inside of the young Dutchman. But we have got the run up Beau Revanche. We're going to try and move up into Massonet. Almost lost the car. A bit of a mid-corner slide, but he's still at the inside for Casino Square. We're going side by side. I'm going to have to go over the bump. Not ideal. And he's got the inside line for Mirabeau. Can we try and get around his outside? No, we can't. And he's defended brilliantly for us. We're going to have to try again. Find another place to get the move done. Oh, we get a better exit out of Raskas. The same move we pulled on Nicholas Latifi. And it works an absolute treat. We're up into 13th. And best of all, we get DRS as well. That's interesting. Lap 11, and there's already cars making pit stops. I think I saw Della Traz made a pit stop. And possibly even the race leader, Sergei Sorokin. So surely they're going for a two-stop strategy if they are pitting this early on. And I honestly think... The two-stop is slower around Monaco, so that this could be interesting for us. How this plays out, going for this one-stop strategy and starting on the slow tires. You got other drivers going for the one-stop with the tires the other way around, the stints the other way around. You also got drivers going for a three, uh, not three, so a two-stop strategy. So it's going to be interesting how this actually plays out strategy-wise. We are right on the back of this massive. Battle pack now. A lot of cars, a lot of ultra soft runners. I think they're most likely all ultra soft runners. So we have done a, a pretty good job to catch up to ultra soft runners on our super soft tires as we lock up going into turn number one. A bit of a mistake. We're now right on the back of this pack, and I think this battle pack extends all the way up to about third place. And there might be two drivers that have um, just run away a little bit. Oh my god, they're all going into the pits. All oh, three of them are. I was going to go for that move that I keep going for on Malia, and those other cars going to the pits just caught me out there. I thought Gustav Malia might have followed them as he's breaking earlier than I think he's going to into Sandoval and cause us to lock up yet again. I could have got past Malia there, but I thought he was going to dive into the pit lane, and being on the inside as someone on the exit of Raskas when they want to go into the pit lane and you don't is not a nice thing. And there we go, Gustav Malia peels off into the pit lane one lap later than the rest of that battle pack. And it looks like everyone else is into the pits, and we are now up into the lead of this feature race. However, of course, we do still have to make our one stop, which is still to come. And I'm not even sure what lap we're going to be pitting, but it's still a few laps away. It's around lap 23, so another six laps. End of lap 24. And we're coming into the pit lane for our one and only stop of this race. We're going to be swapping onto the ultra soft tires and going to the end of the race. As we are currently tumbling down the order, as you can see there's a fair few cars going past. We're down to sixth place now. There's a big pack just going past now. I think we're going to come out behind them, which is not quite what we want. We're going to come out actually behind Nick DeFree. So that really has not worked out all that well because we were comfortably in front of him. We've come out just in front of Nicholas Latifi, but he is on the super softs, but hasn't quite worked out going a little bit longer on those uh, super softs because they've actually come out behind Nick DeFree and a fair bit behind him, and he was a car we were battling with. Unless he's gone on to some different strategy, uh, I'm not too sure, but hasn't quite worked out going longer on the super softs, but we are going to have a lot of pace on these ultra softs. We're currently in P12, We've got about 14 laps remaining. How many positions can we make up? We're right on the back of Nick DeFree as we head through Raskas. A little bit of contact. We're going to sneak up his inside at anti nodes and up into P11. We are one place outside the points now. And it looks like a lot of the runners in front of us are on the slower tyre, the super soft tyre. So it should be a bit easier to get past them than it was to get past Nick DeFree. But that being said, this is Monaco. No overtake is easy at Monaco. We are right on the back of Antonio Giovinazzi. Can we try and move down into the Nouvelle Chicane? Yes, we can. And we get the move done, and we're now into the points in P10. 
We are now right on the back of Gustav Malia. We've got DRS and Rich Revs. We're going to look up his inside into Sandovot. And we make that move stick. Up into now 8th place as someone was in the pit lane. I'm not too sure who that was. But I don't mind one bit. Up into 8th place. We're drupling our points on one straight pretty much. They're going from 10th to 8th. Right on the back of Luca Giotto. Can we look up the inside of Raskas? Yes, we can. We make that move stick for 7th place. Now we're on the back of Alexander Alban. We've got a better run. No, we can't quite get around to the outside. But now up the inside of Sandovant with DRS. And we get that move done for P6. And now we're right on the back of the Prima of Charles Leclerc, the reigning GP3 champion. Can we get past him and move ourselves into the top 5? We've still got... 10 laps remaining. We're right on the back of Charles Leclerc. Can we try a dive up the inside of the Nouvelle Chicane? Yes, we can. Get the car stopped. Up into P5. Has now got Jordan King up ahead in P4. But they are a fair way up the road. But we are very quick on these ultra soft tires. I think we're going to have a push for fastest lap now. While we try and catch up to the lead pack. There we go, fastest lap, and I think that is a full second quicker than the fastest lap Sergei Sorokin had just set. So we definitely have a lot of pace on these tyres. You can see we are already close to the back of this lead four-way battle for the lead. Right on the back of Jordan King. And that switchback line through Raskas. It was working an absolute treat. And we are now into the top four with the top three directly in front of me. All on older, harder, slower tyres. This race is coming up. Brilliant for me. We've got a serious chance at winning this race. We've got Raffaele Marcello in front of us in his campus in third. Then we've got Fuoco in the Prima in second. And I think that is Norman Nasso leading this race in his Russian time. And we still have like seven or eight laps to go. We've got plenty of time to get past these guys. Can we try this switchback line again on the other campos? Yes, we can. And that works. An absolute treat on uh, Raffaele Marcello. And we are now onto the podium. Can we try the same move on Fuwako in the premium? Yes, we can. Up the inside of Anti Nodes. We're now into second place. We're about to start the 34th lap. That means there is five laps remaining and we have one car staying between us and Victory in Monaco. And that is the Russian time of Norman Nato. Oh, he's had a bad run through Casino Square. We're going to go up the inside of Mirabeau. He's going to hang around, right around the outside. No, he's not. We're into the lead of the feature race here in Monaco with five laps. Remaining in the cars behind me, the trailing pack, or the battle pack, the rest of this lead pack are all on slower, older tyres. You can see we're already pulling away from them a little bit. We just need to keep this car out of the barriers now for five more laps. And out of the final corner we come, up to the line for the checkered flag to win the feature race here in Monaco. What a race. Last two first and quite comfortably in the end. I think the gap was out to like 10 seconds or something when we crossed the line. A brilliant race from us. We started last. We picked a good strategy and fought hard all the way through the field from dead last to race winner. What a race. So there we go. We have won the Monaco feature race after starting last on the grid. We fought our way all the way through the field to first and we actually won that race quite comfortably. The gap ended up being 14 seconds to Norman Nato in second and Fuwako rounding out the podium just off the podium were the two Campos cars, Raffaele Marcello in fourth and Jordan King fifth. Reigning GP3 champion Charles Leclerc finished sixth with Alexander Albin in seventh. Gustav Malia finished eighth. Antonio Giovinazzi ninth. And the first of the two stoppers rounding on the points is Louis Dallatraz in the racing engineering. Just outside the points in 11th place was pole sitter Sergei Sorokin who went for that two-stop strategy and it completely screwed him over there. The two-stop strategy was definitely not the strategy that you wanted to be on this race. As you can see quite clearly with the two two-stoppers down in 10th and 11th place. 
If we look a little bit lower in 12th place was Luca Giotto, then Nicolas Latifi in 13th, Nick DeFries in 14th, Oliver Rowland, the championship leader, actually finishing outside the point, so I think this will give us the championship lead, with Nobuharu Machusita finishing 16th, Sergio Seta Camera in 17th, exactly where he qualified, same for Matsushita in 19th, is, uh, 18th I should say, is Felix Sorales, Artem Markov finishing 19th place, Igor Rudzev 20th, Emil Bernstorff 21st, so Arden and Carlin still not scoring points either of those teams, and then my teammate rounding out the field in 22nd place. I said I had good pace at Monaco, didn't I? I was super quick that race, I think I got the fastest lap, Oh, I did get the fastest lap, but I think I was a second quicker than the next quickest lap that I know of. I think Sergei Sorokin was the second quickest lap with a 115.530, and my fastest lap was a 114.4. That just sums up how quick I was. I was a second quicker than the next fastest car on track, and that just shows we started last and still managed to win the race by 14 seconds. Absolutely crazy race and a great result for us. Finally, after five races, Oliver Rowland has lost his championship lead due to our brilliant performance in today's feature race around the streets of Monaco, and that has elevated us into the lead, and we actually hold a 17-point lead in the championship after Oliver Rowland had a disastrous race in Monaco. Just behind the dam's driver is Raffaele Marcello in third, who is nine points off. Roland just behind him is Norman Nato and Luca Giotto who are currently tied for fourth place on 36 points apiece and only two points behind them in sixth is Ante Antonio Fuwako. In seventh place is Antonio Giovinazzi a further five points back off Fuwako and a further five points back off him is Leclerc, Malia and King who are all tied for eighth place on 24 points and that rounds out the top ten. In the team's championship Trident have taken the lead of the championship just ahead of Campos by only two points with Dams very close behind in third, only five points off the championship lead. In fourth place is Prima, just ahead of Russian time with Rapax in sixth. MP Motorsport is seventh. ART Grand Prix are down in eighth with Racing Engineering ninth and Carlin and Arden are the two teams who are still yet to score points in this championship. So that is all for today guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this video, my final video of 2016 actually, as this should be going up on New Year's Eve. If you're watching this in 2016 or even 2017, which is highly likely, Happy New Year, hope you guys have a good night or have had a good night. But that is all for today guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe because at the time of, this, of recording this, I am only 3 subscribers off 700. If we could hit that before 2017 starts, that would be absolutely crazy. I'll be next, Fitcho, and I'll see you all next time.